In this video, we are going to discuss how to create your, your dimensions on your technical sheet metal layout. In previous videos, we talked about our sketches and working on a 4 inch by 4 inch by 2 inch box and how to create our sketch of our layout as well as putting it into half scale. We've talked about the sizes of our hems and tabs as well as how to create all the angles. This is where we were at the end of our last video, which is how to create the technical drawing itself. If you have not done this, please refer to that video. So now we're going to talk about creating a dimension. And in order to create some dimensions, you need to know the parts of the dimension. The different parts of the dimension include the extension line, which is these two lines at the end. And those extend from the part and go to the dimension line. Right up here, this long line right here is our dimension line. That's what holds the actual dimension, which in this case is four inches. And then at the end of the dimension line, it has two arrows. Those arrows reference what that dimension is talking about. So in this case, it is showing you that four inches is from this extension line to this extension line. And it's very important to remember that you have to have those arrows. If you don't, and there is more than one extension line, and the dimension line is extended through all of them, it, it does become difficult to remember or understand which extension line it's talking about. The goal of every technical drawing is to make it as clear and concise as possible. In this case, we are going to be utilizing this type of an extension line in multiple different sizes for our drawing. So in order to continue on, you need to have your drawing at this point where you have everything drawn and are now just waiting for dimensions. Our extension lines are always going to be uh, offset from our part a little bit, just to make it clear, concise, and make sure that it doesn't look like it's part of the drawing. So in order to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to be measuring off an eighth of an inch from our, our one hem over here. We're going to measure down here and up here, and we're going to make a guideline. All of our dimensions are going to be on this side, as well as the top. Those are the two placements for our, extension, our dimensions. The only time we put anything down here is if we need specific dimensions for something that just cannot be met, uh, done on this side. But 90% of the time, we can get everything accomplished over here. So we're going to start by measuring over an eighth of an inch, again, from the farthest point out, which is your hems, the edge of the hem, you're going to go one eighth. And again, these are very, very light lines. So we're talking guidelines, construction lines, as light as you possibly can, because you're really not going to use them for very much. It's just for a reference. The lighter you can make them and still see them, the better you'll be off. There's one line, and then we're going to do the same thing up here, which I've already measured out for our one eighth. Again, off of the edge of the end of the hem. Very light lines, and that's it. What we're going to do is we're going to start on the right-hand side here. All right. Our right-hand side incorporates our hems, our sides, tabs, the bottom, as well as the other side, and hem and this tab. Because of that, we have to have multiple levels of dimensions. And what I mean by that is that we're going to have something that's called overall dimensions, main dimensions, and sub-dimensions. And if we, if I'll show you on a scrap piece of paper here. When we are talking about main dimensions and, and sub-dimensions, etc., if we have our object, let's say, um, let's just say we have this, and then we also have something, let's say, like this, a little cutout. What we would have is we would have a main our overall dimension. That's the first one we would create, and that would be. The, our tallest. It's always the one that's furthest out from the part. And that's because that's, this is what's giving us the total amount of material we need, etc. Our overall length and or width. The next thing we would do is start looking at the individual parts that we would need measured. So from here to here we need to have that measured so that we are able to properly get where we need to uh, cut. And then we would do the same thing from here to here as well as here. We would need, again, this step. 
and then we'd also need it all the way over to the end. Now, we need to have this dimension, however, we also need to have this one in here, and it's, you can't do multiple main dimensions. So this is where our subdimension comes into play. We would have our subdimension come down a little bit smaller, and we'll get into how tall those are shortly. And then we'd have another one on this side. Our big thing is we don't want to over-dimension this part. We don't want to have so many dimensions that it becomes difficult to understand. So in this instance, having those two would be fine. However, if you did add this one, it would technically be over-dimensioned, but it is not the end of the world. All right, so that is our general what we're gonna be doing. So we have our overall main and sub. Now, what changes with all of these is the size of our extension line. Our overall extension line will always be one inch. Our main will be a one half an inch, and our sub will be one quarter of an inch. And that's talking about the length from the bottom to the top of the extension line itself. Our dimension lines will always be at the top of the extension lines and will always be in line with each other. So let's get into this. We're going to start here at the bottom. We're going to make our overall dimension line first. So we're going to do that by lining it up with the edge of the hem on the bottom here. We're going to line up our ruler on our line that we're starting, and starting it at a one inch marking. So right now I'm starting it at seven. And I'm going to draw a single stroke object line that is one inches that starts and ends from the seven to the eight. Could be from the six to the seven, whatever, as long as it is one inch. You're then gonna move up to the top and you're gonna do the exact same thing, making sure that your extension lines are the same size and they start and stop at the same place. Once we've done that, we can create our next part. A little bit far. All right, so after we've done that, we can now create our next extension line. So we've done our, uh, our overall. The next thing is we're gonna work on our main dimensions. Now for this, we're gonna ignore the tabs for now, and we'll come back to those a little later. So for that, here's our first overall now we're going to move into the next horizontal line, and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to line it up, make sure we're on a whole marking, and all these are going to be all one half inch, like so. And then we go to the next horizontal line, and we do the exact same thing, half an inch. Next one, again, we're, miss, we're ignoring the tabs for now. We're just going to keep moving along. And there we go. Now, the reason that we actually ignored the tabs is because that's in between a dimension. Because we need a dimension from here to here and another dimension from here to here, we have to utilize that as a subdimension. And the way that we do that is we're just going to line up again, inch marking on our 1 8 inch guideline, and we're gonna line it up the ruler with the tops of the tabs, and we're gonna make a quarter inch mark right there. And we're gonna do the same exact thing over here. Once that's done, you can go through and start to connect lines. Now remember, when you have a line, and you're trying to connect everything for your dimension lines. You need to leave a space at the center or very close to the center that is big enough for you to be able to write your numbers. And when we are doing our dimensions for this type of a scenario, we do not turn our paper and write horizontally. So you need to have enough room in between that you can write all of your numbers inside there vertically. Because we do not turn our papers just to be able to look at dimensions. So we go through solid single stroke dimension line. And then you can go through your main dimensions. Now on these two over here, the hems, those are too small. So we're just gonna make those a solid line, but we're gonna continue it on. And then we're going to make sure that we have space left over in between all the other ones so that we can write in those dimensions. For the hem, we're just going to have to end up writing it right next to it 
there's just not enough room. And then the last one is just two lines for our two subdimensions. And just like I forgot, make sure you have a space in between for your own dimension. The last thing that we have to do with these is add our arrows. And when we're doing arrows on these, they're nice single, small arrows that are solid. Don't need to be having them really big. If you are sitting there coloring them in, those are too big. You want them small, but visible. Remember, this is a technical drawing, and each arrow should, if done properly, look very similar to the other ones. Now, in the professional world, they utilize templates to give each arrow, make them all the exact same. We're not going to do that here. But you do want to try your best to make them look all the same. The last thing to do is push in all of the numbers that are from your sketch that you have and make them into here. So you're going to take all your dimensions that you wrote down here, and we're not going to be drawing them or writing in the dimensions in half scale. We actually want the full scale dimensions in here because that's what they're going to utilize when they're referencing for making the product itself. And this is what you will be utilizing to make the product yourself. So we're going to go through, and it's pretty simple. We know that this right here, that's the bottom, and in full scale, that's four inches. So four inches. We know the sides are two inches, so we can fill those in. And then if we go back to our notes, we remember that our hems are a quarter inch and our tabs are thir three fourths of an inch. So at this point, you can write those in. Now up here, obviously, with the hems, they're very small, so you're going to have to write neat and small, like so. You can then also put in your dimensions for your tabs. Now when we're looking at our overall, it's very simple. All you have to do is add up all of your specific dimensions in the main level. You're not adding in tabs, only the ones in your main. So in this instance, it would be four, six, eight, eight and a quarter, eight and a half. So our overall distance in this direction is eight and one half inches. And then for when you're doing up here, it's going to be very similar. And the only difference really that you're going to have is that you won't be doing anything with the tabs. There is no dimension that you need for the tabs. In fact, with this little part right here, that is not something that is actually created using a dimension in this direction. That's made by utilizing this 3 fourths of an inch, and then you're just cutting it off. So go through, and you're going to quickly create that extra, uh, these new dimension lines. Starting off again with your overall of one inch, and then you can start just moving from left to right if you feel comfortable at this point doing that. So we're going left to right. Now it's at a half inch because that is a main dimension. Our next vertical line, this is also a main dimension. So we're going to make sure that it's lined up an eighth of an inch off of our part and half an inch. Go over to the next part, next vertical line right here, and again, half an inch. Continue on. And then this last one is going to be our one inch overall. So you should be left with something like this. And then do the same thing that you did before connecting the tops, starting with your overall, leaving a space in the center, moving to your main dimensions. You don't have to leave one for your hems, it's just not enough space. Leave one for your side, the bottom, side, 
and then you can close in the one for the hem. Create your arrows. them to be small, you want them to be looking the same, do your best. But also don't take an hour to do it. After that, all you're going to do is fill in the dimensions just like we did here. We know the bottom on this particular box is 4 inches, sides are 2 inches, and our hems are 1 fourth of an inch. Make it neat clean numbers, doing your best to make it so it's completely understandable and easily read. And since we know this is a square, uh, it's going to be eight and a half inches, but we can double check four, six, eight, one quarter, one half, eight and a half inches. This is your completed box. All of the parts that you are needed on here for your technical drawing, For the next part, we would be going through and transferring this to a piece of paper or to our sheet metal, depending on if you're doing a prototype or if you're going directly to sheet metal. I always suggest doing a prototype just to make sure that all your dimensions and your design ended up coming out the way you wanted it to. Look for the next video to go through transferring dimensions and your lines from here to your actual layout.